This is Late Night. We hope you're doing well tonight. And now, if you don't mind, I'm going to get to the news. President Biden has signaled that he will sign a bipartisan bill in the law that would force TikTok's Chinese parent company to sell the social media platform. All right, you're having a hard enough time with the Gen Z vote. What else are you going to do? Cancel euphoria? <laughs> Those kids are going to be too old. <laughs> By the time they do a new season, they're going to be too old. After the House passed a bill that would force the sale of TikTok, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre called on the Senate to, quote, take swift action on the legislation. OK, but have you seen the Senate? Some of these guys are just getting around to regulating the telegraph. <laughs> I don't like the tapping sound! <laughs> when asked yesterday about former President Trump's sudden support for TikTok, Republican Congressman Dan Crenshaw said, quote, he's getting bad advice from somebody. Hey, don't sell him short. He's getting bad advice from everybody. <laughs> President Biden announced $3.3 billion in funding for infrastructure projects in Wisconsin yesterday and said, quote, we're filling in the cracks in the sidewalk. With what, gold? <laughs> That's right, folks. We're pouring liquid gold into the sidewalks. No joke. <laughs> we're going to fix those potholes with a mixture of diamonds and cashews from the minibar. According to a new ranking, Boston is the best city to go to for St. Patrick's Day. I'm sorry, that should say from. The best city to go from. <laughs> a new report estimates that Americans are expected to spend more than $7.2 billion on St. Patrick's Day, and that's with insurance. <laughs> Former President Trump referred to himself in a Truth Social post this week as, quote, Honest Don. And at this point, I got to believe even he's being sarcastic. <laughs> Check out Honest Don over here. <laughs> Nobody who's honest puts honest in front of their name. If there's a place called Honest Don's in your hometown, it's either a used car dealership or a pawn shop. <laughs> Maybe a pizza place, but not the good one. <laughs> when asked in a new interview about his meeting with former President Trump last week, Elon Musk said Trump came by while he was having breakfast at a friend's house. Well, that does make sense. He probably got there by smelling bacon and floating cartoon style through the window. <laughs> at a hearing this week, the superintendent of the New Orleans Police Department said that there is a rodent infestation in evidence rooms and added, quote, the rats are eating our marijuana. They're all high. But good news, they've put out some traps. Actor Nicolas Cage said in a new interview that he probably did not get paid for his role in the 1996 film Leaving Las Vegas. He also didn't get paid for National Treasure because he didn't know it was a movie. <laughs> you guys were filming that? Oh, man! That means you're a prop! In honor of National Pie Day, Pizza Hut offered customers a free large one-topping pizza with the purchase of a large pie. And if you eat both pizzas, you'll have to go to the bathroom 3.14 times. <laughs> that joke wasn't really about math. <laughs> and finally, Starbucks has unveiled its St. Patrick's Day-themed Frappuccino, which features a matcha creme base mixed with caramel syrup and topped with whipped cream and caramel sugar crunch. Look for it on your local sidewalk Monday morning. <laughs> And that was a monologue, everybody. We are off and running. We have got a great show for you tonight with two of our all-time favorites. He is Ant-Man. You also know him from This Is 40, Anchorman, and so many more. He stars in the new film Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, which is in theaters next week. And Paul Rudd is back on the show, everybody. And she is an Emmy-winning SNL writer, whom you've seen on AP Bio, Sisters, and she's back in the third season of Girls 5 Eva, now on Netflix. So many of my friends call her the funniest person ever. They're all right. Paula Pell is joining us. A Paula to Paula. We finally did it. Before we get to all that, Donald Trump appeared in a Florida courtroom today for a hearing where his lawyers argued that the case against him for stealing classified documents should be thrown out. Even after a key witness came forward and revealed shocking new details about the suspicious behavior he saw at Mar-a-Lago. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. 
feels like there's nothing new we could possibly learn about Joe Biden and Donald Trump, given that they've both been running for president against each other for what feels like 3,000 years. In fact, <laughs> this is true. Early renderings of the first Continental Congress showed them yelling at each other. <laughs> Remember to put absolute immunity in there. Hey, folks, check it out. I just froze some sugar milk, and it's great. <laughs> put sugar milk on a car. I'm not kidding around. But we actually have learned one new thing about Donald Trump that we didn't know when he was president. The guy loves court. He's always there. <laughs> Even when it's not required to be there, just scowling at the defense table, <laughs> storming out of the courtroom, and holding impromptu press conferences while he's penned in by barricades like a <laughs> balloon before the start of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. <laughs> Why does he hold on to the bars like that? He looks like a seven-year-old watching his older siblings about to ride a roller coaster. They're treating me very unfairly. They're saying, I'm not tall enough to ride. <laughs> You're not supposed to love being in court this much. The only person I can think of who spent this much time in court is Judge Judy. And look how mad she is. <laughs> Difference between Trump and Judge Judy, all the money he pretends to have, she got. <laughs> Judge Judy got that money. I'm starting to think Trump likes it because it's the one place he can go where everyone's forced to talk to him. Court is basically his cheers. He's going to have to rope George Went and John Ratzenberger into a criminal conspiracy just so he can sit next to him. Uh, you know, uh, Donnie, the reason Lady Justice has that uh, blindfold there is uh, because they're walking her into a surprise party. That's so true. <laughs> That's so true. That's a passable cliff impression. <laughs> and yet again today, Trump showed up to a hearing in Florida, even though he didn't actually have to be there. This time, his lawyers were trying yet again to get his classified documents case thrown out. Donald Trump is inside a Florida courtroom today as his lawyers are arguing to dismiss the entire Mar-a-Lago classified documents case. His lawyers are pushing for charges to be dismissed in the case where he's accused of illegally holding classified documents. The trial was initially scheduled for May. Prosecutors now want July. But if Trump wins his delay, which has been a winning strategy so far, the trial might not start until after the election. Trump's lawyers say he had the authority to designate those classified documents as his personal papers. The argument his lawyers are going to be making is he was president, he took documents out of the White House. That's because he wanted to say they are his. But they're not his. They were marked classified. If it's marked classified, then it can't be your personal property. The only people who mark their personal property classified are teenagers who definitely want someone to read their diary. Hey, Derek, I'm leaving my diary here. My diary marked classified, so don't read it, Derek. <laughs> but if you do read it, you should skip to page four. Because <laughs> you're in it, and I think you'll find it very interesting. <laughs> By the way, even if it wasn't marked classified, it still wouldn't be your personal property. You took it from work. I can't take home from work and tell my wife it's my personal property for two reasons. One, it belongs to NBC, and two, because I've been told repeatedly that there is no room in our home for my Andy Samberg mummy statue that says my doink fell off. <laughs> and then making matters worse, I called the Smithsonian. They also don't want it. <laughs> Are you upset? Trump thinks he can unilaterally decide that he owns any piece of government property he wants. Government property paid for by American citizens. For example, one of the witnesses in the case, an employee at Mar-a-Lago, who was previously unnamed in the indictment, just gave a blockbuster interview to CNN, where he revealed that Trump moved boxes of classified documents out of Mar-a-Lago while the FBI was trying to get them back. A former Mar-a-Lago employee is now publicly describing how he helped to move materials related to the classified documents case. Brian Butler says he was a Mar-a-Lago employee for 20 years and handled car service for the former president. Butler told CNN he helped Trump co-defendant Walt Nauta load several boxes onto Trump's plane at the West Palm Beach Airport on June 3rd of 2022. That was the same time the FBI was searching a storage area at Mar-a-Lago for classified documents. So, you know, we're there to assist with luggage, anything that needs to go to the plane. We got to the airport, I ended up loading all the luggage I had, and he had a bunch of boxes. You noticed that he had boxes? Oh yeah, they were the uh, boxes that were in the indictment. We were just taking them out of the Escalade, piling them up. I remember they were all stacked on top of each other, and then we're lifting them up to the pilots. Okay, first of all, why were they lifting them up to the pilot? The only time I've ever seen someone lifting anything up to the pilot is a movie when it's a small plane in South America and they're handing over bales of cocaine. 
The first rule of air travel is, when the pilot does the luggage, it's a crime. <laughs> oh, unless it's Spirit. At Spirit, the pilot does everything because there are no other employees. They pick you up at your house, they drive you to the airport, they check you in, they scan you with security, give you a cavity search, they make you a vodka tonic at the airport bar, announce the boarding groups, scan your ticket, make the safety announcements, serve you pretzels, wrestle you to the floor when you've had one too many Bloody Marys and fight with the guy next to you because you decided to wear sandals on a plane like a psycho. <laughs> Give you a hot towel, land the plane, and then jump out and wave the plane in while it taxis on the runway. <laughs> but Trump didn't just steal the documents for his own personal pleasure. He also shared those secrets with members of his club, including an Australian billionaire named Anthony Pratt. There was a member, Anthony Pratt, who he was coming, he, he flew in the night before. He's an Australian billionaire. He finishes his meeting with the former president, gets in the car, and his chief of staff says, how did the meeting go? Pratt, without saying, just says, he told me, and it would be, you know, US military, you know, classified information of what he told him about Russian submarines and US submarines. He went straight to the point he told me that the U.S. subs and with the Russian subs and, you know, something that would pro more than likely, in my mind, be classified. So it was clear to you that he was basically seeking access to China. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Here's a guy that's just buying access. It's, it's very easy to see. An Australian billionaire got top secret information about U.S. and Russian submarines. Thankfully, the good news is he couldn't share any of that information because it's impossible to say the word submarine in an Australian accent. No one would understand him if he tried. Oh, I can tell you where the submarines are, Craigie. <laughs> where the what are? Submarines. Oh, what's well, that? <laughs> Seriously, this should be a massive scandal. That's the literal definition of buying access. A billionaire gave Trump money to be a member of his club, and in return, Trump gave that billionaire sensitive national security secrets. It's insane. I mean, who else was Trump selling access to? Spies, lobbyists, anyone? Trump talks to. So basically anyone except Eric. Father, could I also know where the submarines are? They're in the water hazard just off the seventh tee. Put on your snorkel mask and go look for them. It's so sad. It's so sad he's gonna be out there for hours. I just like to watch his little tube just go around. This is just a textbook case of corruption and self-enrichment. Trump sold secrets for money. That's how simple it is. It's both shocking and also not surprising at all because Trump would sell anything for money. He already has. Crappy shoes, digital trading cards, pieces of his mugshot suit. If he's willing to sell chintzy <laughs> like that for money, of course he'd sell actual national security secrets. I'm surprised he hasn't already started selling the public yet in an infomercial. Do you like reading? Do you like submarines? Do you wish you could read about the locations of our nation's submarines? Well, now you can. With my series of classified commemorative Trump coins. Each coin is engraved with the exact coordinates of one of our nation's covert naval vessels. Call now and the entire set of classified coins can be yours for just $99.99 or as many rubles as you have. And if you act now, you'll get a free Trump beer koozie emblazoned with a detailed map of the White House Situation Room. So no way, call now at 1-800-1055-821724693505. Those are the nuclear launch codes. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Shh. <laughs> this should be a massive scandal. It's Trump in a nutshell. He thinks he owns everything and will do anything to enrich himself. He'll sell secrets to anyone. This time, it was a guy named Anthony. Next, it'll be a guy named Jimmy. John or Mike, anyone who likes subs. <laughs> this has been a closer look. We'll be right back with Paul Rudd, everybody.